Shalom, shalom, shabbat shalom. Glad to be here with y'all one more time, man. What that song used to say when we was little? Glad to be in the service. Glad to be in the service. Glad to be in the service one more time. You didn't have to let me live, but I'm so glad you did. Live to be in the service one more time. What's up, everybody? This week, we're going to talk about something <clears throat> that I always found very interesting when I was reading. And it's something that people will always say when they see somebody, you know, like, looking healthy, look like they're taking good care of themselves. You're glowing, you're glowing. But I'm here to show you that the glow can come, sometimes come from being in right standing with the most high. So, key, one of the keys of life, man. There's always everything... But they say the B-I-B-L-E, the basic instructions before leaving earth. So, man, anything you need. I don't forget who it was, but it was somebody that used to go to one of the churches that I attended when I was little. They used to raise their Bible. It's like, it's in the book. It's all in the book. Start off with Ecclesiastes. Not Ecclesiasticus, but Ecclesiastes that comes after Proverbs in the King James regular Bible. Ecclesiastes 8 and 1. Who is as the wise man, and who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. Amplified Bible. Who is like the wise man, and who knows the interpretation of a matter? A man's wisdom illumines, illumines his face, and causes his stern face to beam, or shine, it's beaming. Illumine. I had to look that up because I haven't heard that word. It's a verb and it's literary. It means light up, brighten, enlighten someone spiritually or intellectually. J.P.S. Tanakh from 1917. Who is as the wise man and who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine and the boldness of his face is changed. I'm going to get into that boldness in a little bit. Let's read about one of our heroes from way, way back in the day, and as some people like to say, ancestors, Moses, or Moshe, as they call him, the Hebrews call him. This is Exodus chapter 34, 29, verses 29 through 35. And it came to pass, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moses wist not, or he knew not, that the skin of his face shone while he talked with them. It was shining. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come nigh him. He was shining so bright that they were scared to come near him for real. And Moses called unto them, and Aaron and all of the rulers of the congregation returned unto him, and Moses talked with them. And afterwards all the children of Israel came nigh, and he gave them in commandment all that Yah, the Most High, had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. And till Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face, like he had to cover his face up because he was shining so brightly that they was all scared of him. But when Moses went in before Yah to speak with him, he took the veil off. He could just be himself in front of the Most High, not scaring him not intimidating him. He probably glowing even brighter, for real. But in front of the people, he had to cover it up. Until he came out and spoke unto the children of Israel that which he commanded. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone or shined. And Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him, the Most High. Let's get it out of the New Living Translation. I was trying to kind of breaking it down as we went along, but let's just get it so everybody is on the same page and we all clear. Verse 28. And Moses remained there on the mountain with Yah, the Most High, for 40 days and 40 nights. And all that time he ate no bread and drank no water. So he was fasting too. So that's another reason why he was shining for real. Fasting is very good for the body. It, it resets and it's very good for us spiritually too. Get this more in tune with the Most High. So, definitely highly recommend it. And Yah wrote the terms of the covenant 
the Ten Commandments on the stone tablets. Verse 29. When Moses came down Mount Sinai carrying the two stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant, he wasn't aware that his face had become radiant because he had spoken with Yah. So it's saying that he spoke with the Most High and that's why he was so bright. He was shining so bright. And when Aaron and the people of Israel saw the radiance of Moses' face, they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called out for them and asked Aaron and the leaders of the community to come over and he talked with them. Excuse me. Then all the people of Israel approached him and Moses gave them all the instruction that Yah had given them on Mount Sinai. When Moses finished speaking with them, he covered his face with a veil. But whenever he went into the tent of meeting to speak with Yah, he would remove the veil until he came out again. Then he would give the people whatever instructions Yah had given him. And the people of Israel would see the radiant glow of his face. So he would put the veil over his face until he returned to speak with Yah. Now let's get the definition of radiance. Y'all probably already know that, but just, for, just in case. Radiance. The word used that was used in that translation right there is a noun, light or heat, as emitted or reflected by something. So it was reflecting through Moses. You know, most I talked to Moses through the burning bush flames. So that was radiant heat and light. So then when Moses came back and spoke to the people, all that heat and light was reflecting in his countenance and his face. And he was shining. He was beaming. This is Ezekiel. And this is another thing what the Most High can do to the face of his prophets. This is Ezekiel chapter 3 verses 8 and 9. Behold, I have made your face strong against their faces, and your forehead strong against their forehead. As an adamant, harder than flint, have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. The Most High sent his um, prophet Ezekiel to speak to the people of Israel, and they were a rebellious house. The Most High knew that they was hard-headed, so he made Ezekiel's head just as hard as they had, you know, just so he could be able to stand up to them. He told them, fear them not, even though we all know that they are rebellious. And he wasn't going to quite listen, but his job was just to speak it. This is the New Living Translation. We're going to do verses 1 through 9. The voice said to me, Son of man, eat what I am giving you. Eat this scroll. Then go and give the message to the people of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he fed me the scroll. Fill your stomach with this, he said. And when I ate it, it tasted sweet as honey in my mouth. Then he said, son of man, go to the people of Israel and give them my message. I am not sending you to a foreign people whose language you cannot understand. No, I am sending you to people with strange and difficult. I'm not sending you to people with strange and difficult speech. If I did, they would listen. And I see that a lot. Like, even with the the Israelite brothers that speak on the street, like, a lot of times they're speaking. It always used to puzzle me back in the day. It used to blow my mind before I knew the scriptures, like, got into them and started reading for myself, and I understood. But they speak the most good and well things to their own people. And they'd be the main ones just walking past, fan in the hand, like, oh, man, go ahead with that, you know. But then they'd speak things that don't sound so nice to people of other nations. And they'd stand there through the whole lesson and be all ears and not interrupting, not doing nothing, just stand there listening. But our people, rebellious by nature, and the Most High knows it. He said it, he called it out many times through the scriptures, but it's right here. Verse 6, let's get it again. No, I am not sending you to people with strange and with difficult speech. If I did, they would listen. But the people of Israel won't listen to you any more than they listen to me. That's a shame, man. We won't listen to the prophets of the Most High. We don't like to listen to the Most High himself. For the whole lot of them are hard-headed and stubborn. This is verse 8. But look. I have made you as obstinate and hard-hearted as they are. So he made him just as hard as they are. I have made your heart, forehead as hard as the hardest rock. Some translations say harder than a diamond. Like what Craig Mack said on that one song. So don't be afraid of them or fear their angry looks, even though they are rebels. Verse 10. Then he added, Son of man, 
Let all my words sink deep into your own heart first. Listen to them carefully for yourself. So he had to soak it in himself so he know it before he could bring it out to everybody else. Then go to your people in exile and say to them, this is what the sovereign Yah says. Do this whether they listen to you or not. That's the key right there. Now let's go to Ezekiel, same um, book, but let's go to chapter 33, verses 30 through 33. Love this. Verse 30. Also, thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of their houses. And speak, and speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh from Yah. They saying in a mocking way. And they come unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people. And they hear the, thy word, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love. They sound modern. But at their heart goeth after their covetousness. Man, that's the truth, man. We we talked about that last time. People, some people are friends in name only. They say they're your friend, but their actions don't show nothing friendly for real. Verse thirty-two, and lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that has a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. Verse 33, that's the kicker right here. And when this come up to pass, lo, it will come, what the Most High says is going to come. Then shall they know that a prophet have been among them. So when everything come true that he said was going to come true, after all that mocking, all that, you know, like them just coming and listening to it and not paying no mind, then they're going to be like, dang, oh boy is right. Yo knew something. By that time, sadly, it's going to be too late. So let's not be like them people. Let's get it out the New Living Translation, just for good measure, like we always do. Son of man, verse 30, son of man, your people talk about you in their houses and whisper about you at their doors. They say to each other, come on, let's hear what the prophet tells us, what Yah is saying. My people come pretending to be sincere and sit before you. They listen to your words, but they have no intention of doing what you say. Their mouth are full of lustful words and they hear their heart seek only after money that sound like today man you talk about some money everybody gonna hear what you got to say you talk about you know like life being more meaningful and there's more to life than money a lot of people will do just that they'll click they'll click like if it's a post or something they say, oh my goodness that is so good oh my goodness or the, my favorite one or least favorite one it make me cringe when i hear people use this word that's deep Nothing deep about it. It's just another way of saying whatever. Oh, hey, hey, okay, if that's how you feel, that's what you think. That's how I take it when somebody say deep to me. <laughs> just so you know. And that little dumb smile that I put underneath of it. <laughs> I can't even do it in real life, even though I look just like that emoji. But I can't even make myself to do it. It just has to happen. But anyway, this is verse 32. You are very entertaining to them, like someone who sings love songs with a beautiful voice or plays music on an instrument. They want to hear, they they hear what you say, but they don't act on it. Exactly. Everybody say, oh my goodness, that is so good. That is so nice. But they still keep doing whatever they was doing. But when all these terrible things happen to them, as they certainly will, then will they know that a prophet have been among them and like i said in another part of ezekiel like our job people get so concerned like i've never been the type of person to bear to someone like once i tell them what the scriptures say or give my advice even my personal advice i'm not the person to check behind somebody like, come on yo why is you doing that i told you about that yo and you still doing it my whole thing is hey the scriptures say once you said what you had to say whether they hear it or forbear, which means to just not even listen to it. The blood is off your hands. Our only job is to sound the trumpet. Our only job is to give the warning that the Most High told us to give. Our job is not to stay on nobody back all day long and to keep on badgering them and keep on trying to convince them. Once you say what you said, move on to the next. 
and and warn the next people or do whatever the next thing that the most high sent you to do sometimes by the time people want to come back and talk about one thing you won't even your thought process and everything is totally different you totally on something else hate to quote anything worldly but like that song that drake had we off that <clears throat> you know like don't try to come talk to me about something i tried to tell you about 10 years ago i ain't even on that no more i'm on something different we can talk about this right here but you're not gonna take me back you know i'm about to drag me back with you moving forward this is about progression man about doing what the most high got us doing from new levels you know you know you know you know you know you know like um what's they call rest of development to say or everyday people all right this is ecclesiastes 10 1 this is a warning getting back to that subject of the glow because that was you know the glow had to do with boldness so this was the most i made his servant bold so i like to think he had a glow too Maybe not to the point where the people were scared of him because they liked to listen to this one. He had a pleasant voice, and what he was saying was very pleasant to them. But still, he had a boldness given from the Most High, and that's what the glow is definitely part of the glow is that boldness that the Most High gives us when we get into his word. Now, this is a warning. Ecclesiastes 10 and 1. Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. So does a little folly to him that is in reputation for wisdom and honor. New Living Translation. As dead flies cause even a bottle of perfume to stink, so a little foolishness spoils great wisdom and honor. Good News Translation. Just one more, so make sure we really got it. Dead flies can make a whole bottle of perfume stink, and a little stupidity can cancel out the greatest wisdom. So if you could be the wisest person in the world, but if you get a reputation for just doing stupid stuff or being just like a clown, being clown like just always on joke time, always playing like I give a great example. The it was a it's a brother that comes on Instagram and he was known for that whole thing where he went in front of the church and was like, Deliver my woman Recently, he's been saying some really on-point stuff, like, on his um, Instagram and maybe Twitter or whatever. I don't have Twitter. Well, I have Twitter, but I'm never on there. But I see it on Instagram. People will repost it. And the stuff he's saying be making so much sense. But because of the fact that he have a reputation for acting a fool and doing so much crazy stuff, nobody not even listening when he dropping wisdom for real. You know, so when you get that reputation for just acting a fool and being a silly whatever, then it's hard for people to take you seriously when you drop wisdom. And also time it too, like it's a word in Sirach to say a wise sentence will be rejected when it comes out of a fool's mouth. Excuse me for a second. Mm. A wise sentence, sorry, will be rejected when it comes out of a fool's mouth because he will not speak it at the proper time. So a lot of times it's all about time it too. But that's a part of wisdom. But just don't be walking around just silly and all goofy time and clown time all the time. You know, like, you got to have some seriousness to yourself so that people can take you seriously. Like the scriptures say, he that is wants to be a friend must show himself friendly. So he that wants to be seen as wise must show themselves behaving wisely. Can't just act a fool all the time and then all of a sudden just want to drop some knowledge and think that somebody going to take you seriously. Even though, I will say, in this modern world, a lot of comedians tell way more truth than a lot of people who are known as scholars and philosophers or whatever so you just gotta use discernment man and, and also do your own research when people tell you stuff that's something real important like a lot of people just will take somebody's word because they do have a reputation or because they are a trusted source or whatever like that sometimes you gotta check behind you gotta check behind everybody for real for real you can check behind me if i tell you something man go look up them verses and check and read it yourself what LeVar Burton used to say on Reading Rainbow, you don't have to take my word for it. Did it, did it? Yeah, man, but let's get into the, the New Testament real quick. This is the book of Revelation. It's the first book that my granny used to read me when I was like three years old. Part of the reason why I am the way I am now. Thank you, granny. This is Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Until the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things say of he that hideth, holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labors, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, 
and thou hast tried them which said they are apostles, and are not, and have found them liars. And thou hast borne, and thou hast patience, and thou, for my name's sake, have labored, and have not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou have left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and remove thy candlestick out of its place. Except thou repent. That's the key right there, repent. Turn it back to, to the right way. Shout out to the group, um, Men of Standard. They have a song that speaks on this. It's called um, Don't Lose Your Candlestick. And it says he knows your works, he knows your patience, he knows your labor, he knows the evil you cannot bear. But the fire is gone now, like you're not on fire for the most high like you used to be. You must ask him for his grace and repent. Or else he'll remove that candlestick out of his place. That's a very, very, um, like one of them gospel songs that is basically really from scripture. You know, like a lot of stuff, a lot of gospel songs we got now is more so like, I don't know, just like the power of positive thinking and even new age to, to really be quite frank. But it's refreshing when you hear the gospel songs that really come from the Bible, like the ones that the great um, Twinkie Clark said she used to have her Bible with her, sitting right beside her, right beside her notepad that she wrote the songs. She had the Bible right there and getting things and stuff straight out the scriptures. A lot of that 80s gospel, man, even some in the 90s, you know, like you could get real a real word right in the song for real. So yeah, shout out to the Men of Standard. And I pray that the Most High will lay it on Brother Isaac Curry's heart <laughs> to give me my $2,500 from 2001 or 1999 or whatever. And that's another matter for another day, man. Anyway, let's continue on with this. This is um good news translation of that same um, chapters and verses in Revelations chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 1. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, this is a message from one who holds the seven stars in his right hand and who walks among the seven golden lampstands. Like, you know the menorah. I know what you have done. I know how hard you have worked and how patient you have been. I don't know if y'all can hear me because somebody's calling me. I hope this works. Somebody called me. This ha same thing happened to my brother Mark the Messenger earlier. Somebody called me in the midst of me trying to make this video. And it actually, like, when I went to hit in for the call, it actually stopped the video recording. So hopefully the ad that I have will allow me to put the two videos together. And it'll flow seamlessly. If not, you probably get a little break or whatever. But anyways, let's go back. And we're going to start over from verse um, 1 in the Good News Translation. Revelations chapter 2. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, This is a message from one who holds the seven stars in his right hand and who walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know what you have done. I know how you have worked and how patient you have been. I know that you cannot tolerate evil people and that you have tested those who say that they are apostles but are not and have found that they are liars. You are patient and you have suffered for my sake and you have not given up. But this is what I have against you. You do not love me now as you did at first. Think how far you have fallen. Turn from your sins and do what you did at first. If you don't turn from your sins, I will come to you and take your lampstand from its place. So that's what we don't want to do. We want to repent so that the Most High let us keep our bright light. Let us keep shining for him. All right, this is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have... <laughs> Let's try that again. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. So far beyond all that they look for. Good news translation. On that day, someone righteous and full of confidence, there it is, that confidence and boldness, will stand before those who oppressed him and made light of his labors. They will be amazed to see him safe and tremble with terrible fear, just like they trembled at Moses. He's shining. 
This is Second Ezra chapter 2 and 28 just to get into that salvation. Be not weary, for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou shalt be merry and have abundance. The heathen shall envy thee, but shall be able to do nothing against thee. Hallelujah. Good news translation. Don't worry, when the day of trouble and distress comes, others will cry and mourn, but you will be happy and rich. The other nations will be jealous of you, but they will not be able to harm you. Now let's go one more place. And we should be good for this week. This is Job chapter 5 verses 21 and 22. This is all the things for the people of the Most High. The blessings is way more to it, but this is the ones that, trend, that coincided with what we just read. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shall thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Neither shall thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field. And the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. And thou shalt know that thy tabernacle shall be in peace. And thou shalt visit thy habitation and shalt not sin. Just like in the... um. Psalm, and no evil shall come nigh thy habitation, for real nigh thy dwelling. This is good news translation. Time after time, he will save you from harm. When famine comes, he will keep you alive. And then war protect you from death. This is very important stuff in the times that we in. Elohim will rescue you from danger. He will save you when destruction comes. You will laugh at violence and will not be afraid of wild animals. The fields you plow will be free of rocks, and animals will never attack you. Then you will live in peace in your tent. When you look at your sheep, you will find them safe. Oh yeah, verse 21, Elohim will rescue you from slander. And that's really, that's really resonates with me right there. But anyway, man, if y'all want that glow, that real glow, tap in and stay connected to the Most High, man. Do his commandments. Seek every day to live your life the way that he wants us to live our lives. And that's how we get that true glow. That's how we get the real boldness. Because the man of he with you, who can be against you? Whom shall you fear for real? With that being said, shalom, shalom. Most high bless and keep y'all. And I pray every one of us have a wonderful week. And we can get back together real soon. All right. Love y'all.